Hello. So we've recently talked about how to update your 3D printer's Marlin firmware if there are no updates available from the manufacturer. And you can watch that video uh, right here. Now, one of the questions that was unanswered in that video was how do I upload firmware if I can't do it through USB because my board has no bootloader on it? Well, that's exactly what we're going to look at today using this little thing. So what even is a bootloader and why do you need it? Well, it's a small piece of software that runs on your mainboard's processor every time it starts up. So every time you turn the machine on or when you hit reset. And normally it just takes a second or two and then starts loading the regular firmware that's already on your board. Except if it detects that you want to upload new firmware when the bootloader runs, in that case, it will take the firmware you're uploading through the USB serial port and overwrite whatever is already saved in the processor's flash memory. The bootloader is exactly why you can upload firmware just so easily using just the USB port. Now, when you don't have a bootloader installed, there is nothing else on the board uh, that will handle that process of accepting the firmware from your computer through USB and then writing it to flash storage. There is, however, a separate feature built into the Atmega processors that these boards use that still lets you write new software onto it. And that's exactly how these boards are programmed when they're made. What I'm talking about is an ICSP, the In-Circuit Serial Programmer. Pretty much all boards have this six pin header labeled ICSP or ISP on this one. And that's exactly what we're going to use. It allows us to write to the entire flash memory of the microcontroller while uploading through USB with a bootloader only lets you write to that space that is not yet taken up by the bootloader. And that actually brings up a question that you should ask yourself before you get into this. Do you even need a bootloader? Because the thing is, yeah, you can use the ICSP to flash a bootloader to the board and then upload your firmware through USB, but you can also just flash the entire firmware to the board with the in-circuit serial programmer and leave out the bootloader entirely. I mean, you need the ICSP hardware either way. So pros and cons here. If you have a bootloader, it makes uploading new stuff through USB possible. But if you don't use one, you save that one second every time a machine starts up, but you also save some flash space on the microcontroller. Now, the thing is, your manufacturer hopefully didn't just leave out the bootloader because they didn't know any better. Uh, even though that's entirely possible, usually it's because saving that space lets them use a cheaper processor without having to disable too many features in the firmware. You see, almost every feature you turn on in Marlin uses some amount of space, and you can see that after you've compiled the firmware in Arduino with the Verify button, it shows it right down here. Want to use a BL Touch? That will be five kilobytes. Want to use universal bed leveling with it? Well, there go another 43 kilobytes. It all adds up. The largest 8-bit processor you could have is the Atmega 2560, which is on this board and many others. And that comes with, as the name suggests, 256 kilobytes of flash memory. Yes, that is kilobytes, not even megabytes. And eight kilobytes of that are already taken up by the bootloader according to the Arduino page. The Atmega 1284, which is used by a lot of budget 3D printers, or the Atmega 1280, which is basically identical to the 2560, but uh, they both have less flash memory. You might have guessed it, it is 128 kilobytes, as the name implies. And interestingly enough, Arduino say only four kilobytes of that are used by the bootloader. Still, it's four kilobytes that might make the difference between you being able to use a firmware with all the features you plan on using uh, versus not being able to fit it on the processor at all. In the early days, we were even using processors as puny as the Atmega 644P, which I have on a Sangu Nulu Nuino board around here somewhere. Uh, but you can take a wild guess at how much flash storage that has. Uh, yes. 32 kilobytes. No, just kidding, it's, it's 64 kilobytes. Uh, but at that time, the Sprinter firmware was the hot firmware in town, and that didn't do nearly as much as Marlin does today. All right, so if you go without a bootloader, you get to save a few kilobytes of flash storage and that one second of startup time. But really, unless you need every last byte of that flash memory, I think you should still install a bootloader. But whichever option you choose of installing a bootloader or not, you will need specific hardware to act as that in-circuit serial programmer, the ICSP. One of the popular options is simply using a second spare Arduino, and I'll show you how to set that up in a second, 
But what I like to use is the USB Tiny ISP, which is just this small little dedicated board that comes with USB on one side and the ICSP headers on the other. I find that this is just overall faster to set up and just easier to use. Plus, you can get them on AliExpress for just three bucks or so. So it's actually cheaper than getting an extra Arduino just for doing that job. Uh, I've linked them in the video description below, either on cheap from China or as a high quality version directly from Adafruit, who actually designed the USB Tiny ISP as an open source project, which is why you now have the option of buying a cheap one in the first place. So thank you Adafruit for that. If you're on Windows, you might need to install the driver for the USB Tiny ISP, which again, you can get directly from Adafruit, also linked below. And before you plug in the programmer to your board, there's one more thing that you should check, and that's this jumper right here, which you can use to power your main board uh, or Arduino that you're programming, because you can also program these with a ICSP. Uh, you can power these from the USB port on the programmer, but since there's a lot of stuff to power on a full 3D printer mainboard and all the accessories that are attached to it, uh, it is better to turn on your 3D printer's power supply and to remove this jumper right here so no current flows back from your printer into your computer's USB port. After that, you can plug everything in. In the Arduino software, you should pick the right programmer and board, and then you have the choice of either burning a bootloader to the board right here in Tools, Burn Bootloader, or uploading the firmware you've got open using the Sketch Upload Using Programmer option. If it doesn't work, try flipping the ICSP connector around on your mainboard. Keep in mind that this overrides everything that is already saved on your processor, so if you burn a bootloader first and then try to write the firmware also using the programmer, it's actually going to overwrite the bootloader on your board as well. So if you want to go with a bootloader, first burn that onto your board uh, using the programmer and then unplug everything and upload your firmware through USB, just like I described in that previous video. Uh, on the other hand, if you upload your firmware directly with the programmer, when you want to update it later, you will need to use the programmer again since you cannot upload it just through USB. Either way, you choose leaves you with a firmware uh, that is functionally the same as the other. So, Lastly, let's check out how you can use an Arduino board you might already have instead of a dedicated USB Tiny ISP. This is based on the guide on Arduino's website, so I'll keep it short here. You start by wiring the Arduino to your board like this, but just like before, I'd recommend leaving out that 5 volt connection and instead turning on your printer's power supply. Connect the Arduino to your computer with USB, and then in the Arduino software, go to File, Examples, Arduino ISP, Open that, select the correct Arduino board you're using from the boards menu and hit upload. This will now flash your Arduino to work as a programmer. So now you can select the Arduino as ISP programmer and choose burn bootloader to install a bootloader on the board that's connected to the Arduino or just like before, directly upload a firmware you have open by going to sketch, upload using programmer. So really after you uploaded the Arduino ISP sketch to your Arduino board, you can use it just like the USB Tiny ISP or any other programmer. So yeah, that's that. Uh, I hope it cleared up some things about programmers, bootloaders, and why you may or may not want one. If you don't think this video is helpful, let me know in the comments below on what I should improve. Otherwise, give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing for more videos like it, and don't forget to hit that bell so you actually won't miss any. Subscriptions kind of don't matter anymore to YouTube if you don't hit that bell, so pretty please. And yeah, to keep the channel running, I'd appreciate your support on Patreon, but even just buying things like uh, Arduino clones or USB tiny ISPs through the affiliate links in the description helps out a ton. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.